Well, hello and welcome to PM Personality Profile. My name is Nana Ansakwal, the fourth. I'm sat here at the Sahara Bar at Alisa Hotel. I'm here to talk to my new found brother. You know, as you grow along, there are people who come in your life. Some you make nothing of, some there's something about them that makes you think, hmm, I wouldn't mind you being my brother, and then they become my brother. And being that today is World Radio Day and this brother of mine is also into radio, I thought, you know what, why don't I take this opportunity to know about you more? So, so funny enough, you and I are going to know for the first time his background, everything, because all I know about him is the now. But where he came from to now and where he's projecting to go to, I don't know. But he has come up with amazing stories that have blown your mind and my mind. You remember the story about the Siamese twins? Yep. Who was the guy who tried to get these kids saved? Seth Kwame Boati. Folks, I'm going to go for a break. When I come back, I am talking to the wonder boy in the media. Don't move. Thank you very much for staying. But, but I joined multimedia about, about two years ago. Yeah, barely about two years ago. Then I bump into this very enthusiastic, highly energetic young man. And we sort of fell in love. I thought, wow, I like it. And so we build a mutual respect. We meet in the corridors every day. And I admire everything that he do. Indeed, I call him Ojia here for Seth Kwame Boate. But he's always out there looking for some destitute or some desperate person to tell their story and ultimately seek help for them. World Radio Day, this is our radio man for today, Seth. I am very, very, very privileged, <laughs> very, very privileged. And I don't know whether I'm I. Well, you see, even though you're my brother and everything, and I know, like, from two years what you do and everything, but I just want to go back a little bit to, you know, how come you ended up here and doing, you know, what, what you do. So when I go back, where do I go? Kumasi? Yeah, you go to Kumasi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kumasi, then um, you move straight to May 2002. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, one Sunday, I was listening to radio. Yeah. It was uh, Sunday morning. Then I heard an announcement that a certain company was looking for a receptionist. I just completed um, Kumasi. Uh, Kumasi Secondary school, Kumasi Anglican Secondary School, CAS. Okay. So I applied, not knowing Love FM um, um, had a vacancy and they mm -hmm. were looking for a receptionist. Mm -hmm. So I applied. I didn't know it was Love FM until they called me that come for an interview. I went and it was Love FM. By God's grace, I was one of the two guys who got the opportunity to to be taken as um, as receptionist at Love FM. Wow. So I started as a receptionist. Whoa. Even though I was there, my ultimate aim was to be in the newsroom. That was my ultimate aim because I had a senior called um, Joseph PJ mm -hmm. who who worked in one of the radio stations in Kumasi, Capital Radio. Okay. So I told myself, I want to be like Joseph PJ. I also want to speak on radio, but I wanted to be in the newsroom. So, um, when I got the chance to work as a receptionist, one, um, one day, I told the editor that I want to be in the newsroom. He said, for now, just be where you are. I was supposed to report at work at 7 p.m., but I always went at 4 p.m. And I, I went to the newsroom and, um, get, a feel and of get a feel of what they were doing. I remember when I was being interviewed, they asked when I would be going to school. I told them, well, because my father is dead and my mother is a single parent with a number of kids to look after, I needed to work for some time and gather some money before I could go to school. Mm -hmm. So I, I made this promise that I wasn't going to school. I was going to be with them for five years. Nana, in two months' time, admissions opened, and I got people to buy admission forms for me, UCC, Legon, and Tech. So people bought me the forms I filled. Interestingly, mm -hmm. I, I got all the admissions the same day. Mm -hmm. I went to the manager then, Dominic Gajipo. 
And I said, Dom, do you have a cane? He said, why? I said, you have to beat me today because I made a promise and I'm here to break that promise. He said, what is it? So I put all the three admissions, uh, admission um, letters on his table. He said, congratulations. Wow. So you're going to school? I said, yes. OK, anytime you're on vacation, just come back. Come and join us. I said, oh, thanks be to God. So that was how I started. Wow. Wow. So which, which of the universities did you choose? I went to University of Cape Coast. OK. And God was so good to me, I got a chance to work on the campus uh, with a campus-based radio station, Radio Vaco. OK. And um, Radio Vaco was an affiliate of Joy FM. Mm -hmm. So I got the opportunity to be a stringer for Joy FM, or if you like, their central regional correspondent, mm -hmm. from second year till I completed school in 2007. Wow. Yeah. So for you, it was your passion and your dream? Yes. Yes. And um, aside that, I told myself that I could, as at that time, um, work hard, get a chance to be in the limelight, and also help others. That was my ultimate goal. Wow. Yeah, that was my ultimate goal. That one day, one day, I know I'll get a chance to be in the newsroom. And if I get this chance, I think I can use that position or opportunity to help others. See, OG is here for hours and hours. OG is here for hours and hours. I need to, I need to find a little stool for you, uh, uh, so you can officially live your title. No, I'm grateful. <laughs> so, from UCC, did you go back to Kumasi, or you came to join? So it was such that on vacation, I would go back to Kumasi, oh, okay. work with Love FM, and. Said Ali Yaku, the editor there, was so good to me. Was so, so good to me. He taught me a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Then later, Sam Seladia in the joint. <laughs> I also learned a lot from Samson. Mm -hmm. Then I went back to school. So anytime I, I, uh, we were on break, break, I joined Love FM. And I was still stringing from, from Kumase for Joy FM. Oh. So I was doing the two. At times, you hear Let's go to Love FM said come about for this report. Another time you hear let's go to our central regional correspondent said come about for this report. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure this is the thing. Where, where, where is he yeah, based? Yeah, we were surprised. <laughs> where is he based? Okay, let me go a little far back, you know, before finishing school. What was life like before coming through school? Because daddy passed away quite early. Yeah. Well, Nana, um, my father was 60 years old when he gave birth to me. Pension baby. Pension baby. When he died, I was 17 years old. He died at the age of 77. Okay. Nana, I'm the last of 17 children. <laughs> 11 boys. <laughs> hey. 11 boys, mm -hmm. 6 girls, 6 girls, okay, mm -hmm. in quotes. Oh, okay, yeah. And I'm the last. Whoa. Not with one woman. Mm -hmm. about four and if I don't tell you that is if you come to our house or even now if you meet all of us all the 17 and I don't tell you we are not from the same mother you never believe you will never believe there is nothing to show or you'd have no evidence that we are not from one womb yeah. we are like one Wow. yeah we are one that's good and my mother I'm also the last from her side, two boys, two girls. I come from Trede in the Ashanti region. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was born, um, I was born in Kumase, an area called Asuka Kiravi. Kiravi, yeah. And um, that was where uh, we stayed um, until I was 11 and we moved to Ajiso. My mother was a teacher, but she had an eye problem, so she had to go on voluntary retirement. She had 13 years more ahead of him, ahead of her to, to, to go on retirement, but because of her sight, she had to. Wow. And coincidentally, as soon as she retired, it wasn't a government bungalow, or, or it, where we lived wasn't for the school. Coincidentally, as soon as she retired, the landlord also said, well, I need my room. And my mother was torn between using the little money she was given 
to go and hire a place or to use it to just put up a two bedroom house somewhere. So she decided on the second one and uh, we had to move to Ajiso. That time, all of us, I mean my siblings, we wept like babies. Moving from Askwakira V, middle of Kumasi to Ajiso, then was a village. Going to live very close or opposite a cemetery. Hey. You could just imagine, mm -hmm. with no light, with no water. Just the four walls. Yeah, we didn't have wall. So we were just to move in there and be there because uh, we needed to be there at mm -hmm. that time. So we went to Ajiso and we started from there. Life wasn't easy. Life wasn't easy. So I started my junior high school education over there. Mm -hmm. I went to Ajiso LA. Okay. Ajiso LA. There, we preferred calling the school State Experimental. <laughs> <laughs> sounds better. <laughs> that sounds better. <laughs> And um, then the life wasn't easy. I, I tell people all the time that it got to a point um, I had to beg before I could get food to eat. Wow. Yeah. It got to a point um, I had to, uh, to be smart and find ways of getting food to eat. So then I could come to your house and challenge you that I can eat, I can eat or finish um, two cups of rice. You try me and see. <laughs> hey, yeah, it was a trick. At times, <laughs> I got people to say, okay, we will try. If you don't finish this food, we will take our money. Yeah. They will try. I, can, I could eat only uh, some portion, portion, portion but up. no, and they'll be angry and say, take the rest home. I'll say, thanks be to God. <laughs> it means that even our food to eat, the next day I also get food to eat, another food to eat. Wow. At times, I had to go about searching for money well especially around football field no mm -hmm. of course people go there all the time to watch football and to play times I, I will get some coins and um hmm. wow <laughs> how, how are your other siblings how were they coping well i was the last so i couldn't take hunger mm. i couldn't so the only opportunity the only chance we had then was to wait until 7 p.m. So we go to a house behind us to go and get um, Gary and sugar on credit. Because the woman who sold the Gary would have returned from market that time to give us those things on credit. Otherwise, otherwise it was, it was you had no choice, Nana. You had no choice. Yeah, you had no choice. By this time, mom's eyesight is bad, so she, 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 she didn't have any income from anywhere. No, she wasn't working, and, and she had used all the money she had to put out that building, mm -hmm. that two-bedroom uh, house, so she had uh, basically nothing. We, we depended, depended on, uh, on her monthly what, uh, retirement or pension mm -hmm. or whatever that mm -hmm. they, they gave them. That time was 80 cities, 80 cities. My, Big sister was in um, secondary, secondary school, St. Louis yes. Secondary School. In no time, she finished and she went to St. Joseph Training College, Pechem. So this little money, mommy needed to use this to support her. The one I'm directly uh, behind or after mm -hmm. uh, was also, well, Betty was in the Jusuman Secondary School. So imagine all of us surviving on the 80 cities. School fees, school fees, books, fees. transportation. But God, God was so good to me, Nana. I, I had all my teachers were my friends. All my teachers. So. Well, you're very affable. Oh, you? yeah. So I <laughs> uh, would go to school on empty stomach. But I know that break time, one or two of them will call me, send me to go buy food, and definitely will get some to eat. Wow. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Wow. So, what was the determination to study? Nana, hmm. my mother used to tell us something, that what you're going through, face it now. Face it squarely, because there are better times ahead. You must go through it now. Don't defer. Go through it now. And that should push you to learn. Nana, I was determined to make it. And she used to tell us that we can never fail, even if we want to fail. 
because failure is not part of our D, uh, DNA. So we can't fail. So I had that right from the scratch. So in all my dealings, in everything, and I, I knew I was going to make it. And I had no reason not to learn. Even on a hungry stomach? Yes, I had no reason not to learn. I remember when I was writing a, a month to BEC, I had started have, uh, developing ulcer. And I'm, as we speak, I'm still battling with that disease. Battling that disease. Ulcer, so a month at, uh, before BEC, I wasn't going to school. Whoa. I was very ill, I wasn't going to school. I don't know how I was even able to write BEC and I got 16. 16. I wanted to um, attend uh, Kumasi High. Kumasi High was my first choice. Then TI and Media was my second choice. Then Kumasi Anglican was my third choice. 16. Kumasi High. No way. Amas, no way. I was fortunate that where we lived at Jusso, the next house, uh, we had this nurse. May her soul rest in peace. Um, um, Auntie, Auntie, Auntie Cecilia, or Mama Cecilia, that, we, that was how we called her. I think she saw something in me. So she told me that, said, I have to help you, no matter what. If I help you, I know that I will have good stories to tell in the future. Not a story, stories to tell. I'm going to take a break here <clears throat> because I'm actually blown away with said story. Don't move, we're coming straight back to find out what Auntie Cecilia did and then fast forward to today. Some of the amazing stories that Seth has come up with. Whoa, has it been inspired from her humble beginnings? Who knows? Maybe. Don't go away. Well, thank you very much for staying heart to heart with my brother, Seth Kwame Boating. What an amazing story. And I bump into this chap every day, have a smile, have a shake, have a gun, and I didn't know. That this guy was hiding such a humble beginning for me. I am moved, and I'm sure you out there too will find something for it. This is World uh, Radio Day today, and what an amazing radio personality to talk to on a day like this. Well, sat here at the Sahara Bar at Alisa Hotel, we will say thank you very much. Indeed, anytime we shoot outside, they grant us the opportunity to use their premises, and why not? It's lovely, it's cozy, it's very welcoming, and I encourage everybody to come. But I just want to hear the angel and TCC. And TCC. And TCC. So one day, she was going to work, and she needed to go to the um, Ghana Health Service Regional Office in Ashanti Region to sign something. So she said, said, let's go, so that after work, that time she worked at the Centreso Government Hospital. Let's go to my hospital. After work, we'll go and beg some of the headmasters that they should offer you admission. And she said first, we needed to go to the regional office for her to sign something. We got there, then she met her boss. I remember her very well, and I'm really looking for that woman, Mrs. Agatha Boni. She said, Cecilia, what are you doing here? Won't you go to work? She said, oh, I came here to sign something. Who is following you? Are you supposed to come here with your son? She said, ma'am, um, after, after work, uh, I will go somewhere with, uh, with him. Uh, I want to visit some schools to see if uh, we, I can speak to some of the headmasters to offer him admission. She said, really? If I get him Kumasi Anglican, would he go? The woman said, yes. So she said, wait for me. She entered the office, wrote a note, and said, take it to the headmaster. He will offer you immediate admission. And now we ran to Kumasi Anglican Secondary School. With Auntie Sisi? With Auntie Sisi. She was asthmatic and hypertensive. We had to run to the school. We handed over the, the, the note to the headmaster. He said, come and pay your school fees tomorrow. Mata. Mata finish. <laughs> That was how I got the chance to be in that school. And I told myself, and I promised that woman that I wasn't going to fail her. I wasn't going to disappoint her. I told her, I was emphatic and I was serious. I meant it. Told, I said, ma'am, I'm not going to disappoint you. I'll make you proud. That was what I told, I told her. 
And she told me that, yes, I've seen something in you. I know you can make it. That's why I'm compelled to help you. And now, this woman helped me from secondary school level. I remember she, she would prepare she talk, she would, uh, put together provisions, she would send me money. And she did this up to the university level. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. She told me, I've adopted you as a son. So I have to help you. Unfortunately, 2005, she died. And I remember um, she had leukemia. Um, when it became critical, she called me to come home. She said, said, pray for me. Pray I survive, because I have something special for you. She was rushed to Kolebu. She didn't come back. Not knowing, she had told friends that in case she dies, a certain young man who come there crying, trying to do everything, anything to help, trying to carry the coffin, trying to, like, grieving, like work, mm -hmm. like assist. That guy is sick. That was what she told friends. So remember at the funeral, I worked hard. I did everything but all that I was supposed to do, I did. So one woman approached me and said, are you sad? I said, yes. Oh, she said, auntie, see can you, auntie, see can And I don't want to go there again. Wow. Wow. So how, how much of your stories today was inspired from then? I mean, I want to start with, uh, the Siamese twins. Hmm. I mean, that was just, you know, something else. Tell me a little bit about the Siamese story. So the plan was, you know, I had started doing documentaries. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful to Matilda Asante Asidu and Kofi Osu. Kofi Osu was um, programs director at Joy FM. Mm -hmm. Matilda Asante, when I joined Joy FM, was the news editor. They saw something in me. They told me that they've realized I have strength in documentaries and features. Mm -hmm. So immediately I joined them here. They advised me to concentrate on that, and I did that. So it was one of, the, one of my stories, my normal stories or documentaries. I was doing something on deformed babies, how they are neglected, mm -hmm. how some of them are abandoned, and what we can do to show them love because they need that to survive. Mm -hmm. The little love we show them can get them to survive. So I happened to be in Kumase, at Kofono Chitini Hospital, speaking to nurses, speaking to some parents. Then I was told of um, the Siamese twins, that they were born a few weeks ago, and um, doctors had told the parents that if they were able to raise a thousand cities, they could separate them. So I went there to the ward and uh, I asked the nursing director there, Dr. Planchu, to give me the opportunity to interview the mother. And Nana, I was touched because a number of people, a number of parents or mothers would have run away leaving these babies behind. Mm -hmm. But the mother was so concerned and was so positive and had vowed to love the kids. Wow. And she knew that no matter what help will come, she was going to get money, the 10,000 cities, for the surgery so that they will be separated. So I went there, she told me a story and told me that she believes and she always uh, talks to the kids that uh, she believes that God will send a helper to help them. So she told me about the love for them. And I was touched. I said, no, I have to put this documentary together. So it wasn't really about the Siamese twins. It was about the film babies. Baby. And I featured them. And God was so good that after the documentary, they needed 10,000 cities. Mm -hmm. And after the documentary, I had raised almost 35,000 cities wow. for them. Wow. And I had prayed to God to help the doctors. Um, and they take this surgery. And I was there 
when they were doing it. I was present. I saw everything from A to Z. They, 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 they separated them, 6 o'clock p.m. I remember very well. And Nana, you should have been there to see the excitement. Unfortunately, one died the next day. To this time, the second one joined. Said I was on, I was on the morning show, the super morning show when you called from Kumasi uh, that you know we lost one of the babies. I mean, how did you feel? Because I could feel you now, literally. All, it was like they were your own. I have been told that um, I'm a journalist, and at times I have to put my feelings aside. That's supposed to be one of our principles, mm -hmm. but I couldn't help it. Seriously, mm -hmm. I couldn't help it. I remember hmm. and I wept. Yeah. I wept. And I remember that day I prayed to God. I told God, God, please. If the first one is gone, please ask for the second baby. Please. Please. She should stay. I told God, I prayed that morning. I prayed. I remember I called Reverend, um, Reverend, um, um, the one who preaches now, Adam FM. Who's one? Who's sir? He said, Rev, pray with me. I want the second one to survive. Pray with me. And that morning she prayed. Around seven, I had then come to Accra. Around seven, Ohimi Teria called me that. The second one had died. You know what I told God? I said, God, you have disappointed me. Oh, that, that was what I said. I said, God, you have disappointed me. I had prayed to you. I had told you to please let this one survive. I didn't understand. I didn't understand. Not because I wanted to, to, to be famous or whatever, but then I really wanted them to live. And the doctors had suffered. It was an intensive surgery, 12 hours. Whoa. 12 hours. And I, as I said, I was there from A to Z. 12 hours. 12 hours. Continuous. Non continuous. About eight different surgeons. Wow. So, aside wanting them to survive so we could thank God, I also want them to survive so we could say big thank you to the doctors. Because mm. they did, they did very well. But then that didn't happen. And I was so disappointed. But I told myself that will not discourage me at all. There are still 1,001 people out there who are in need. Mm -hmm. So I decided mm -hmm. to press on. Another story which uh, you actually called me and uh, asked me to watch. Uh, funny enough, he always calls me, oh, Nana, my uh, documentary is coming, you have to watch it. And I said, I can only listen to it. I can't watch it. I'm not very good at watching uh, people who are dying or ill. Or I, can, I don't mind listening. You know, it was the, the, the penal one, where mm. through circumcision, you know, children were losing their... And I remember you calling me, saying, oh, it's on a TV now. And anyway, how are you do before we even go there, how are you doing your radio and TV? Are you coping well? <laughs> you see, I'm enjoying the, the blend, seriously. Okay. I'm enjoying the blend. Okay. Hitherto, I didn't want to, to add cameras or TV to what I was doing. Mm -hmm. But I'm now in love with even the TV more. I'm telling you. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. But the visuals are a bit more shocking. Oh, yeah. but funny enough, I, don't, I can listen, I can, but I can't watch. I can listen, but I can't watch. Uh, that story, uh, you know, you put your, as, as a man, if you put yourself in that shoe, it, you, you just don't want to imagine. Mm. Am I going, uh, would I have gone through life without this uh, organ? You know, and, and, the, and, and it, it's amazing how frequent it is. If you hadn't brought it to life, oh, yeah. I didn't realize. Mm. That, 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 how much. What, what's the reaction you get from the public? Nana, I didn't also know that there were plenty of victims. Mm. 
that you know our society, how many parents are willing to come out and make it clear that this happened to my son? So I remember after the documentary, I got calls from all over the country, calls, people calling to tell me that yes, they have also suffered. They've been victims. They are, they are, their sons have been victims. Yeah, they didn't know what to know what to do. And how I got to do this story, I was I was in the newsroom one day when I got a call from a doctor in Kumasko for Noche. He said, said, I've been listening to you and I know you can do something about this. These things are happening. If we are not careful, we are going to get a number of babies um, have their, their organs slipped off. Yeah. Wow. So he told me that you have to do something about this and educate. Mm -hmm. So I said, yes, I'll do it. And it wasn't easy getting parents to open up. It wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. I went to Brunga Hafo, Kumase, a number of places to get parents. And I told the story. And I'm happy that um, the uh, gender ministry is doing something about it. They are getting support from UNICEF to train our doctors, because that is what we need. We need to retrain these doctors because these accidents, preventable accidents, are happening even in the hands of medical uh, personnel, nurses and doctors. Aside the one's arms, mm -hmm. nurses and doctors are also getting it wrong, meaning they need to be retrained. retrained. And I'm happy UNICEF uh, wants to partner um, the gender ministry to run the, um, this education for them. So we'll take a break here, and then uh, when we come back, we'll watch a little bit of uh, this botched circumcision story, and then you understand why I couldn't watch it. I don't mind listening, but you understand why I couldn't watch it. Uh, so don't move. We're coming straight back. Oh. In some cultures, males must be circumcised shortly after birth during childhood or around puberty as part of a rite of passage. Circumcision is commonly practiced in Jewish, Christian and Islamic faith. Certain African cultural groups here in Ghana and among the Yoruba and Igbo of Nigeria customarily circumcise their infant sons. For some of these groups, circumcision appears to be purely cultural done with no particular religious significance or intention to distinguish members of a group. For others, circumcision might be done for purification. Among these groups, even when circumcision is done for reasons of tradition, it is often done in hospitals. Well, 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 now you can understand why I couldn't watch it. I mean, I don't mind listening to how my brother is able to go close and experience firsthand. He can take the title or Jia here for minimum press, or you can keep it. Uh, I, I must say, kudos to you, you're very brave because it's not that I don't care, but I don't think I have, I'm strong like you to go get close to, you know, people like that. So thank God for people like you to help. But you know, another story which is impressive is the, uh, the artistic prisoner story. We'll watch a little bit of it, and then you tell me what the outcome was. The child strapped at her back tells how important the child is to the mother. The 26-year-old convicted prisoner takes me through some of his impressive artwork. He first shows me a drawing of a woman with her child strapped to her back and carrying a bucket of water she had just drawn from a stream. This tells how much she loves her child. Alhassan Watara comes from Sampa, a town in the Brungahafa region on the border with Cote d'Ivoire. No one ever taught him how to draw, but his works have a professional touch. As we speak, I can paint you when you are gone. Unfortunately, Alhassan Watara is 72-year jail sentence. He didn't steal, cause physical harm to anyone, rape or kill. This is why he's here. Watara's father abandoned him while he was still a fetus. His father did not accept responsibility for his mother's pregnancy. He managed to go to school, but with no one to support him. 
he dropped out of school to search for his father, whom he had never known since birth. It was all joy when he found his father, but that joy soon turned into sorrow. He offered me a seat and told me I'm not his child. So I asked him to show me my father, but he could not. Some people from our town came to him and attested to the fact that I am his child. What was the outcome? Now, now, in the next few weeks, um, I have this major documentary coming up on prisons. Mm -hmm. On prisons, the prison situation in Ghana. Mm. So, um, I've been to five of our prisons, Navrongo, Tamale, Sunyane, Kumasi, and Nsawam. I got to Sunyane, and the prison officers there told me the story of this guy. He's called Alhas Motara. He's not the Ivorian president. He comes from <laughs> Sampa. <laughs> no, they are very close to Ivory Coast. Uh -huh. They told me of this talented artist and a painter who had been jailed. And then even there in jail, he was still drawing and painting. Wow. And now he can look at you and is there less than 30 minutes. Produce it. He produce something for you. So then after the story, I was there when I got a call from the PRO in that prison, said, Otara has been released. I said, wait a minute. Then he said, hold on, I'm sending you pictures. Results. Then he sent me pictures of Watara out of the prison. Apparently, when we heard this, uh, his plight, as we just watched, mm -hmm. Some lawyers sitting somewhere heard the story and they, they, they realized that the boy was wrongfully jailed. So they came together, filed an appeal, and used the story we just watched as, the evidence. as an evidence. Also went to the court with some of his work and told the, the, the judge that look at this, look at what this boy is doing and what got him in prison. Must he be there? I'm told the judge wept. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow, what a result. The judge wept and said, you can't be here, go home. In, in the courtroom, they were fighting over his work. The lawyers. And now, now he's out. Last Monday, I was there when I got a call from a certain company. They called that they want his number. I said I asked why. They said they want to work with him. What a what a result. <laughs> what a result. Maybe maybe we should get Watara. Maybe we should get Watara on this show. We'll get we'll get his number from you. Maybe maybe you can ask him so we can hear his story. We can hear his story. Oh, that's amazing. But then the the last time we met in the newsroom, uh, you made me listen to another story of a woman who was maybe had dementia. And had been in prison and was desperate to go and see uh, the mm -hmm. children. I mean, what, what's, what's happening to that okay. story? And what's so, so it's part of the documentary coming up in the next few days. Mm -hmm. um, this woman, I'm told, mm -hmm. uh, wasn't mentally sound when she committed that offense. Um, she used something to hit the daughter who was pregnant and she died. She had seven children. Um, she was sent to police station and jailed. She's been on remand for four years. Remand. Now, yes, now she's okay because um, the officers there managed to get um, her transferred to Accra Psychiatric Hospital for treatment. Mm -hmm. So she's been treated and she's waiting to be trialed. Or, uh, mm. uh, yeah. And Nana is pathetic. Now the husband is dead. The husband who was taking care of the seven children is dead. So the children are their own. And then she wept. She said, my family back to me. Wow. 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 She asked me, you think if I was OK, I would just pick something and hit my, my old child and kill her? Wow. Who knows? Maybe when that comes out, some lawyer somewhere will pick it up. We are hoping and praying. We are hoping and praying. Because 
In the interview, I asked, so what happened? She said, they said, almost say, me kum me Wow. So, but what, 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 because I see your passion and your stories are all related to, to health. Even though your background is not health, you know, I'm sure by now you are, you know, you're a qualified senior nurse by, <laughs> by practice. <laughs> I'm qualified? trying to add security to it. You see, now, oh, yeah. uh, why, why health so much? Nana, there are issues in that area. Mm -hmm. And we need education. And I've taken it upon myself to help educate people. To help educate people. Yeah. Did you know that anytime you get a, um, a dog bite, you should even wash with, um, um, with water and soap for 15 minutes thoroughly before you are taken to hospital? I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. I did something on rabies and I, I learned a lot from it. I didn't know that if you have uh, a dog bite, uh, what? They should not stitch the wound. See. But it's been happening. I see. So there's a lot of education. A lot to of be education. Done. We need a lot of education. We need it. We need a lot of education because some of the things we are going through are preventable. I, mean, see, I need to be moving it forward because. Uh, now, the last time you caught a police you know oh. doing something that they were not supposed to do they were, they were begging and begging i mean do you get to a point where you worry that hey you know because i did this they're also going to hustle my life or hey, i'm doing my job no, no i wasn't scared i was on my way to tamale i got to um, somewhere in the ashanti region and i saw them taking money they'll just stop you and take something from you the previous day the igp had come out to tell all all of us that now no police officer would take bribe. Mm -hmm. They were corrupt free. So even if you give them money, they will not accept. And they were there stopping and, they were and there extorting. So I told the driver to stop. I stopped. They didn't stop the car, my car anyway. So I told the driver to stop. So I stopped and I went straight to them. And I said, look at what you are doing. Where's the money you have taken? And they were shaking. I said, let me see the money. So they brought everything from their, their pockets and they showed me. Like they said, look at this. The IGP came out yesterday to say that you, you, you no longer said bribe. Look at what you're doing. They were begging me and crying. They were crying. And their leader, <laughs> who was there with them, <laughs> had moved away from, from the juniors. And I called him. I said, Master, come here. You have told them to take the money. He said, bruh, I don't know anything about what they are doing. <laughs> I mean, now you can laugh, but when it happened, it was quite serious. And uh, interestingly, you know what happened? When I got to Tamale, they have circulated my pictures. Oh, I'm telling you. Really? Oh, yeah. Tamale. When I got there, my pictures were all over. Apparently, they saw an Adum FM sticker. And uh, I think during the news, my name was mentioned. Okay. So they quickly went on Facebook, searched and got my pictures, they circulated my pictures that to, among themselves that, well, this guy is on the road coming, so be careful that uh, <laughs> he doesn't zoom his cameras on you. Wow. Yeah. Well, but they didn't, they didn't give you any grief? No. Okay, okay. Anyway, but let me alert all these uh, young ladies watching that, you know, don't come close to my brother because someone beat you to it. Now, I know you recently got married. Mm. Right? I mean, that's why I'm, I'm warning people to stay mm. up. Because I know by now, there are some lovely ladies thinking, ah, that's the kind of guy I want. But I need to let them know, how's married life life? Um, for now, it's fantastic. And I have prayed that it continues. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're still in the honeymoon period? Uh, no, Nina. Um, I think I was away for just five days or so. Mm -hmm. Then I came back to work. I had to start school. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's one thing, you know, because I know your documentaries are really uh, time consuming. Uh, you're doing your masters now, second masters. Second right? masters. Second, second yes. masters now. Considering there's a guy who's looking for 20 pesos just to feed, <laughs> therefore, even <laughs> suffered ulcers during his second master. These are stories that have to be told. How are you combining both? Is it because people are sitting there waiting for you to bring their. You know, I get calls education. every day. I mm. get calls every day. I'm blending the two. Okay. I'm blending the two. 
I'm in school, yet the least chance I get, I step out mm -hmm. to do interviews, to uh, meet people, think of the next thing I'm supposed to do. So I'm blending the two. It's not easy, but um, I think uh, I can do it. Mm -hmm. I can do it, yeah. Mm -hmm. How's your relationship with mom now? My mother? You, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I call, I call her B. I see. Uh, yeah, she, she's not just so I just about this chest. They, they call Mama B, mm -hmm. but I call her B. <laughs> we speak almost every day. That's good. She's doing well. She's doing very well. Mm -hmm. And you know, I tell friends that I can't fail because of that woman. Mm -hmm. No, I can't fail. And I won't die now because of that woman. Oh, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Because she prayed, she's praying. And she will pray. She prayed. Mm -hmm. She's praying. She will pray. She prays for me all the time. She will wow. call me and say, Oh, I know you are busy, but it's just to tell you, God be with you. God be with you. God should help you. God should protect you from me. God should take you to wherever you are going. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm so, in love with Auntie B already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in love with Auntie B already. She's Beatrice Enin. Yeah. Wow. She's Beatrice Enin. Wow. Enin. Enin, yeah. Wow. Wow. How often do you visit? You know, the last time I saw her... Tell your mommy's boy. No, the last time I saw her was um, somewhere in November. Hmm. Was it November? I think somewhere in October when I was going to Brazil okay. uh, to speak at this uh, Global Skills Cell Congress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I went to Kumasi to tell her I was traveling. So I think I... And oh, in December, my wedding. Ah, oh, course. she came. Of course. She came. Of course. I've not had time to uh, go to Kumase, but uh, um, very soon I'll be there. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it's World Radio Day today, and I mean, I think you've been a fantastic radio personality uh, to share your story with us. But what's the next big thing? Are you going to leave radio now, go and sit in an office somewhere, and then we're going to miss you because what, what's the next big thing? Uh, I don't think I'm. Um, living radio anytime soon uh, oh yeah I have a lot more to do I people are suffering and I need to touch base with them mm -hmm. so maybe until I'm done helping all of them I can't quit <laughs> <laughs> I can't quit yeah I can but I'm um, adding more value to myself that's why I'm in school now mm -hmm. I'm reading um, conflict security and peace you know I also do a lot of um, conflict related stories Sorry. Yeah, I want yeah. to know more about that area as well, and I'll add it to what I'm doing. So I'm going to combine um, security or conflict and health. I'm going to do um, the two. Amazing, oh, yeah. amazing, amazing, amazing. I could carry on talking to my brother till the cows come home. But for a radio, World Radio Day, I couldn't have gotten a better guest. In fact, I'm actually shocked because, you know, we are literally the first one in the newsroom every morning, <laughs> exchange pleasantries, but I didn't no, know no, we had such a <laughs> hidden story. Wow, I am grateful. My brother, thank you very much. Yeah. And until next Friday, that I come to you with a different personality, folks. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.